everybody. It's Saturday Night Live, Ken Braverman edition. Um, we're not live streaming, but I'll eventually learn how to do that. Wanted to talk about the stock market and also just the world in general. Um, I've done a lot of traveling in the last week. I was down in Florida and now I'm back in our nation's capital. I drove right by the White House today. Um, <clears throat> just did a lot of traveling, saw how people are acting uh, out and about. Some people wearing masks, some people not. There's, uh, I think, the cool kids. Like, I've seen a lot of teenagers and younger people or people that just don't care that wear their mask around their chin while working. Some people, I saw a 7-Eleven clerk today that had no mask on. That was pretty rare. Um, but anyway, the point is, is think things are different, though. Um, when you're out and about, things are just crazy different. And it's affecting how we operate. And it really has impacts on the stock market. So it's just, it's a very interesting dynamic that's going on. And I like to see how it plays out in the markets, but also how it plays out in real life. So I'm going to talk about both in this video today. So I'm looking at um, stock tickers and, and changes from Thursday or Friday's change. This is Friday's change. Sorrento Therapeutics, if you haven't heard, they potentially have an antibody found or something. And when you're finding an antibody or I haven't dug into this story specifically yet, but I understand what this means. Finding an antibody or something that is going to counteract the virus or the shape of it or the molecular makeup of it is a discovery. Their stock went up 158% on Friday. I missed it and heard about it after the fact because um, I didn't have them on this list. My list is not totally exclusive. Like the things on the market, the tickers change all the time. Sometimes they're on, sometimes they're off and go to something called the pink sheets or something, which is not the NASDAQ or the NYSE. I didn't know about this previously. So things are moving in and out. And I, I didn't have a complete list to begin with. So I didn't have them on there. I just saw them in the news and looked them up and added them. So that's cool. Um, we're going to continually have treatment discoveries made on a daily and weekly basis, but they're not going to be available necessarily to everyone right away because there's synthesizing of things, there's testing, there's, this is a months, months long process and the vaccine will probably be a year um, to really get it done. So we're going to have this weird way of transitioning into kind of sanitized communication. Like our kids are not going back to school this summer. There's going to be no camps really going on this summer. It's not, it's not going to happen really because you, you start to see as things spread, like it, it has too powerful of an infectiousness and a death factor that we don't have it fully treated or contained yet. So we're all going to kind of live in the fear of getting it as we should. We should not be out kissing everybody you see and coughing and talking close to other people. That's a horrible, horrible thing to do. You hear stories about people getting spit on or coughed at as a, a joke or an angry person doing it and they end up dying from it. It's the inoculum load or the amount of it that you get or the consistency in which you get exposed all have impacts on you and how strong your immunity is and in and, and shape you are and your vitamin D count. There's a million things going on, but it's dangerous. So what happens is we change the way we interact. Like I was saying, there's not going to be camps going on. There's, there, there aren't going to be swimming pools open this summer. These things just aren't happening. I think the football season will start in September. And I think there will be some fans there because I think we'll have treatment by, by like August. We'll have actual real treatment that will prevent people from being in fear of going out and contracting it and dying or getting really, really sick because we'll have enough of a handle on it with an antibody type treatment or cocktail. I, I've thought that that Pepsid and Merck um, ha have a very interesting option as well. Like the Pepsid is one that, uh, I'm gonna start looking at things by by uh, percent of ceiling price issue we're talking about here uh, and why I have Merck. Merck's got um, something called Pepsid, which is famotidine, which is a 40-year-old uh, generic drug. It's not going to make them a ton of money. Their stock's not going to go to 1,000, but it, apparently it helps because it's the right shape to bond to the virus. So if you – I'm not going to give medical advice because, one, I'm not a doctor, and, two, this hasn't been fully tested yet, but they're working on it, which is – if you get the virus in the early stages and you're not super sick with a crazy heavy fever or cough or it's not destroying all parts of tissue in your body yet, you're in the first few days. If you popped some Pepsid, don't do that. If you got some famotidine and you got it injected into your veins by a doctor or a professional and it was proven to be safe, 
if that happened, what molecularly supposedly was happening is the famatidine is the right shape to just bond to the virus. So if you got free floating virus rolling around, the famatidine comes in, latches on to a certain part of it, or or latches onto a part that replicates. It does something to bond to it to prevent the virus from getting onto the cells, getting into the cells, replicating and going haywire. It, 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 because of its chemical stickiness, whatever, it's the right shape or a very close one. And it's been tested for 40 years for heartburn and stuff like that. So we already know kind of what to expect when you get certain doses of it, although we don't know what it's like to inject 10 times the amount into your veins. But the theory is that if you got a lot of virus go going around and you put in a lot of this magnetic stuff that's going to grab to the virus, if you shot yourself with a lot of it, you might sweep up all the virus. That's what, what I was thinking about months ago, trying to figure out what that molecular shape is. Well, it just so happens that on a list of potentials of drugs that already existed, Merck was one of the top three candidates, not Merck, famotidine, which is in Pepsid, which is made by Merck and marketed by Merck and Johnson & Johnson. So I have Merck on this list because, uh, like, let's take a look at these top 10 stocks I have on here and how they did over the last seven days or so. I actually want Abbott on there because Abbott's having a bad run. I want to talk about Abbott. Um, uh, anyway, Merck's famotidine is probably going to help and probably going to be in high demand, and I think that's going to affect Merck's stock positively. How, how can it not, right? I mean, I know it's a generic, but Merck, Merck, Pepsi is what they're testing, famotidine, whatever. Like, I, I feel like there's an impact there, right? So let's look at just the last week of these stocks, because I've been talking about these stocks for a week or more, most of these that are on here. So what's going on is um, Tesla ended up as below 800 a share. For the week, I think it's traded sideways. That's fine. I mean, Elon's been screaming out and yelling and everybody wants to get back to work. That's good. I mean, people do want to get back to work and get out, but we're going to have to take precautions and people are going to get sick and some people are going to die. And uh, we're going to kind of, I think, tolerate a certain level of that. However, we want to feel like there's something we can do to prevent ourselves from dying or getting really sick. So we're going to take precautions, whether it be masks or I think a shield, which I'll talk about is Google on this list. Yeah, Alphabet's on here. I'll talk about it in a sec. All right, so Tesla traded pretty much sideways or down a little bit. That's fine. They're a great long-term play still. Walmart. Look at Walmart shoot up at the end of Friday. Um, traded flat all week. Look at that. That's pretty. How about the last 14 days? Um, and then shot up at the end. Why did Walmart shoot up on Friday? Um, some people keep raising expectations. They realize that because we are changing the way that we interact, um, we're limiting the stores that we go to. We want to get everything in one shot, like going to the store and walking around, especially if you have kids or something like that. That is an event now. You can feel it. Like people are concerned. You're not supposed to get in people's space. There's like arrows on the on the on the lanes and the aisles. I mean, it's insane. I was joking around with a friend today and I was talking, I was saying, you know, when you go to Costco, you feel like you're in basic training in the military. Like people are ordering you around. They get pissed if you don't go in the right lines. You don't want to be standing next to each other. You better have a mask on. Like it got real, right? So it's funny because Walmart, not only are they everywhere, and sometimes they're the only place in the small towns anyway, but now they're still, they're open. Like if you need toilet paper, um, I, I came back to a place where there was toilet paper here when I left and there's no toilet paper now and the person cannot get toilet paper. So it's still difficult to get, but Walmart's pretty good about their supply of toilet paper. They probably can only buy one. Point is people realize this and Walmart, I have their target price of 150. Watch them get there. Um, there's no stopping them. All right, I got target price of 150. So you see them shoot up a little bit at the end here of the week, but to end up up on these last 14 days and really up very nicely on the week. That's that's the thing about that chart was how great was that for Walmart to go up there uh, at the end of the week. And I bet you that continues as this trend continues here for the next several months. Um, I have them, I think they're getting to 150 by, by September or August, um, probably, yeah, right about that time. And that's when you'll see people starting to lighten up about travel because there'll be more treatment and stuff, which I'll get to. But uh, Merck, we talked about with Fematidine. Google Alphabet. So here's Google trades down a little bit on the week, but they're just so strong. Um, I mean, their 30-day trend is probably up. Uh, they're, 
they're into everything. And here's my idea. Yeah, look at that. That's a nice trend for, for Google right there. So Google Alphabet. So here's what I'm thinking. Masks suck. Masks are awful. I, of course, wear one when I should. I saw a lot of people without them. They're, they're actually, I feel like they're not all that healthy either. Like this is the thing. Not having a mask is a bad idea because you don't want to get particulate in, from other person's mouth in your mouth. You better be healthy. You better be ready to deal with that if you're going out without a mask. Um, you better not have comorbidities. You better not be obese and not have a good circulatory system. Like you better be careful if you're going to go out and live in the world now without a mask because you're going to get exposed to this stuff a lot. Now, wearing a mask though, while keeping things in, I don't like re breathing my own air. Who, I mean, has everyone realized how terrible their breath is since they started wearing a mask? Like it sucks. Have coffee, like, oh my God, have a cigarette and then put on a mask. I mean, that must be death, right? Like <laughs> point is, is they suck. And what I was thinking of, and plus they, they're not perfect. Like air comes out of them. Like you just, it just comes down and goes up here, cut fogs your glasses. It's not that it's all of a sudden, you know, the air, even if you have a, a really good mask, I guess the air somehow gets purified or particulates go through the N95 filter or something. But in general, you're not wearing a gas mask or whatever. Like it's not totally protective. Anyway, it's just a mask. So I was thinking, well, they suck. What can we do? And also what can we do on long instances where we need to be sitting or near people, but we don't want to breathe or share their air like a plane flight. Um, one thing I'm going to predict is a super spreading event um, on a plane. Uh, it's bound to happen. It's the easiest prediction in the world. Somebody will hope, I hope they're not Asian. I hope they're not Asian just for the stereotype at this point. But somebody, let's call them Jamaican. A Jamaican guy is going to get on a plane and cough and sneeze from, you know, Barbados to Australia or some crazy flight or something. And like 20 people are going to get sick and like four are going to die of something of some mutated version of rough version of somebody just blowing their crap. Maybe they throw up, maybe they have a, a you know, fit on a plane and they're going to get stuff everywhere and that air recirculates. I don't care what they say about those filters on the plane. I don't believe it. You ever go flying and then you end up sick right afterward? Why? Because you're, you're sitting right next to somebody. Like, I don't care what they say. So, so this person is going to get a lot of people sick and there's probably going to be deaths. And then everyone's going to get freaked out about flying because it doesn't matter if you're wearing a mask, you're still, if you're in like the, the, the shotgun spray of somebody sneezing and coughing all the time, you're going to get exposed. You're going to get it on you. Like you're not being sanitized by like liquid hydrogen when you leave the plane, like you're going to have it on you. So it, it's tough to deal with. So people are going to get scared. People are not going to want to fly or they're going to want to take some type of super precaution. This is where Alphabet comes in. So I think that Google Glass, the old glasses with the computer on it that was like a screen up here. So I never wore one, but I saw videos of how it works. And the, the old Google Glass thing sucked because it was small and it looked goofy and it didn't work right. And it was glasses and people were worried that you were recording them and it sucked. Um, it didn't suck. It was, it was awesome, but it was not, it was before its time. It wasn't designed right. It didn't have enough space also because it was just built in glasses and people didn't want it to be intrusive. Well, all of a sudden now, what the most important thing is going to be on a plane flight is that you don't share air with other people or your surroundings or the air that comes in is filtered. Well, how do you do that? Well, what if you have a motorcycle helmet type thing? I don't have one lying around, but or a hockey helmet or something. It doesn't have to be that big on the back, but a helmet or a shield that goes down and then you have like, you know, cloth coming out here. Like you look like a Saudi Arabian prince, but you've got a full shield on right here. This, this is a complex helmet device that could be a Google glass and have a screen and a monitor and a whole bunch of cool stuff that I'll talk about in a later episode. I've talked about it in a podcast before. I won't get into all the super cool technical stuff you're going to be able to do with something like this, but just for its resourcefulness and let's call it a protective shield for a long trip. If you've got a helmet on and it's got a filtration system and a battery and air that comes in gets purified or cleansed so that you don't get viral. I mean, the virus is so small. It's like, it's like 20 uh, nanometers or something across. It's like ridiculously small. So it's almost impossible to completely filter out for it. However, you're going to be able to do a pretty good job of filtering the air to the point where it's going to be uh, 
exponentially better than just having a mask on and even exponentially, exponentially better than not having a mask at all. And it's goofy and it sounds ridiculous, but it makes a lot of sense if you think about, I got to get from point California to point Washington, D.C., and I don't want to drive for a week, although I do want to drive for a week, but I, don't, I can't drive for a week. I got to fly. What do you do? I don't want to get sick or I got to bring a kid with me and I don't want my kid to get sick. How do I, am I going to be sure that that doesn't happen? If they got a helmet on that's not airtight but pretty close and got a filter with air and a battery coming in, you could do six hours on a plane and not take in anyone's air next to you. I would pay $399 for a Google Shield or if it's not Google, it could be, do we have Microsoft on here? I, I want to bring Microsoft over Abbott. I'm going to talk about Abbott in a second, but where's Microsoft? I want them on this list. Let's replace uh, Tesla with Microsoft for a second. Um, but could be the Microsoft window. Microsoft has something called the HoloLens and has the technology like a Microsoft go up to 30-day trend. Um, Microsoft could do this also and have a shield and have a whole, the whole thing. Absolutely. They're down for the week, but still up at 183. They're, they're still strong for them. They're strong. So... And they're probably going to keep going. They'll probably hit 200. I, I actually want to change their, their – I have them at 170. I'm outdated. They're going up. Um, if you get them below 170, lucky you. Let's leave that at 150, actually. Their 150 to 200 range is reasonable for them right now. They could do something called the Microsoft Window and do the same idea as the Google Shield and have their own version of the HoloLens and augmented reality through their shield, through their air filtration device. I'm imagining a thing that's got a shield, like a, like a glass, plexiglass or whatever thing here. And this thing, you'll be able to control from the inside, probably by talking to it. So like, if you want to black yourself out or you want to look like Gigi Hadid, I don't know who she is, but I saw her on a Saturday Night Live skit from the other night. Um, you can you can make yourself look like somebody else probably on the front of this thing. I'm imagining, imagine something that looks like a, um, a welder's helmet. Almost. It, I feel like that's the right shape because then it fits on everybody's face. You could lift it up if you are not concerned about breathing air in for the next few minutes. Like you're walking through the hallway or you need to put something in your mouth, right? You know, like you could do that real quickly and then not get exposed. Like there's a lot of cool things you could do with something like this. So I actually think it sounds ridiculous. I've been trying to, to sell this idea to people that normally agree with me on stuff, and they're like, dude, you're a moron. And, but I, I think that it provides a level of security that you're going to want if there's a super spreader incident or something to in, to induce you into realizing that you want to be secure with shared air. Um, let's talk about LSI. LSI is going to keep making screens. Everyone's going to migrate to screens. The, um, the lady I saw working in a 7-Eleven um, today without a mask, um, She's going to get sick, right? I mean, she has to. Um, but she should be replaced by a screen. I mean, we should replace almost everything we can with screens because screens are easy to clean. Screens don't spread the virus. They might house the virus. As a matter of fact, we need to figure out who makes some type of coating that kills the virus. I've heard copper is a really good thing to kill viruses and kill bacteria, especially. There probably will be some type of surface that will be able to... Uh, not just a cleaning solution, but like a surface that doesn't house the virus well. There's probably a, a material that we will come up with. So that's something that LSI should probably look into as they continue to install screens. The important thing is, of course, the screen and not a person. A screen doesn't have lungs and incubate the virus and then spit the virus back out at you. The, the screen just lets you touch it and walk away. You know, you can clean your hands later. Screens, screens and surfaces, I, I do not think are are the massive problems of spreading. I think it's talking and getting high doses of it back and forth, having extended conversations close up. Like I'm giving this camera coronavirus right now if I have it, like there's no doubt, right? But you're not getting it on the other side, right? And if I touch the camera, I probably don't have to worry much, much about it, I bet. I think that that whole touch your eye, touch your face stuff, I think that's overblown. Don't, don't trust me, I'm not a doctor, but I think it's from the talking that you get the high doses because it just makes more sense. And it's projectile coming at you as opposed to, Oh, I got to touch and then stick my finger down my throat to get it that way. It just doesn't make as much sense. Um, it's maybe some people get it on their nose if they touch the, their fingers and have a lot on it, touch their nose. Maybe that's why they lose their sense of smell. It's a possibility, actually. Um, AT&T, I am changing my price on AT&T. It's a good thing I'm bringing that up. I had them buy at 30. I'm wrong. Um, 
they they're not I don't know I need to look at them again we're changing them to a learn more I think they're undervalued but I'm not happy with how they're responding and I don't like the fundamentals behind my pick I, I think I'm getting too partial with them so I I'm, I'm getting I'm moving them off um, PGT innovations why are they on there oh yeah oh god that's another one I screwed up on so if you watch my video I, I they're fine they're okay I'm gonna stay away now I, I I bought an option on them this week because they went up one day and I was in Florida and I was like oh yeah people are gonna be getting windows done on their homes because they're a they're a window and a reinforced door. I'm like yeah hurricane season is gonna come and people are gonna want to now save their homes from a potential hurricane because your home is everything right now in a lockdown situation so interest rates are low if you refinance your house you want to put some money into it so that it increases in value and also stay secure then boom your reinforced windows and doors are a good thing there i got played around on their stock though and their stock did this and i picked it up here because i'm an idiot and it's not there yet so it'll probably come up let me, let me stop my stay away hold on i just talked myself into learn more i mean they're not they're not perfect don't get me wrong, but they're, they're okay. Um, if you get them under 12, it's really if you get them under 11. Like if they go down and dip below 11 on Monday, you're, you're probably going to see them go back up above that again, as you can see them at 11.33. So changing that a little bit. Um, taste, I like how they responded. That's uh, Burger King chains. I think, uh, I think the, the Impossible Burger and fast food in general with drive throughs is all going to be successful across the board. I think your Wendy's, your Burger King, your, um, I don't see why Taco Bell shouldn't work unless there's a real meat problem, but people are always going to Taco Bell. I, I have not, I ha, I've been on the road a lot. I'm thinking about what I did. And I'll explain, you know, the other one I want on here is Dunkin' Donuts, which I should have on here. DNKN, I believe it is. Dunkin' Donuts. DNKN. Dunkin' Donuts has a Beyond Sausage sandwich, which I tried. It tasted like a sausage sandwich, and I didn't get sick. It's, uh, every time I have one of these plant-based burgers and I don't get sick, I'm like, all right, good. <laughs> I consider it a win. Um, because I want to migrate away from meat because I'm a little scared of meat. And also, meat isn't always in stock. Have you noticed? If you've been out, I've noticed a lot of places out of out of things, and it's kind of like, oh, I tried to get my um, Beyond sausage sandwich at Dunkin' Donuts, and they go, oh, we're out of the the English muffin top to it. They go, you want it on a croissant? And first of all, yes, I love having stuff on croissants. So I was like, hell yeah, um, but they're out of stuff, and they're out of stuff because one, they're getting a lot of business, and they're not used to this maintaining of all this business, and also food is is sketchy now. Like food is there's a run on weird types of food and like everyone's orders and dynamics of things change and food, you know, food often takes some time to make. So you can start to see the supply issues getting a little confused in certain areas. And I think that tells me that Dunkin' Donuts has a ton of drive-throughs that I think that their drive-through per franchise is much greater than Starbucks's drive-through per franchise. I, Starbucks tend to cubby themselves in holes and in, all these little places where people used to have a lot of walking traffic when they were going to work and now cities are just where people are living and not working so they're not doing the walk around and leaving the office to go to the starbucks coffee some of them are open with their window open and like serving you through the door if they don't have a drive through and like you can walk up to it but it's all confusing and it's tough because you got to get out of your car in that situation dunkin donuts I don't know what the numbers are on it, but I can just see it, it, it by being all around the country and just knowing this, that Dunkin's tend to have drive throughs more per capita or per store than Starbucks. And that's why I see Dunkin going up. If you look at their 30-day trend, well, they had a good day on Friday, but they had gone down like Dunkin. Yeah, Dunkin's arcing up, and they're going to continue. I, I have a target price, I believe, of 70 on them. Where, where are they? Oh, I haven't priced them out. I was looking at them, but I haven't looked at their financials enough yet. That's why they're, um, but I was looking at their price. If you get them below 55 and now below 65, buy it because they're going up to 70 over the next month or two. They just are. They're, 
I found myself, I had to eat out a lot when I was in Florida and I found myself getting my coffee at Dunkin' Donuts in the morning because I love getting coffee out. I hate making it at home. It's always been my thing. And I just do the drive-thru. I was starting to know the drive-thru girl, you know? Um, so yeah, that's a good one. Uh, PGT is not, is not a top 10 stock, but they're on here for some reason. Um, yeah, the, the, the Burger Kings are going to do, do well as well. What's Wendy at? W-N-D-Y? No, it's W-E-N. I think that's Wendy's. Yeah, um, Wendy's at 2086. They, they're going to get to 25. Thus, they have that meat, meat shortage problem. Um, also, drive throughs everywhere. I mean, I, I remember them back down at 13 or 4. I got, I got them at 14 a couple months ago. I called this back back about here in March when I first well, they were one of the first stocks that I called because I realized about their drive through situation they were like the first one that came to mind look at that look at that and so this is how you know they're gonna get to uh, get to, to 25 is they have been up there before right like look at this they're just starting to reach this twenty. That, that was about 25 where they had been at before the crash they did not deserve to crash. They're going to be a, a reaping benefits of the coronavirus because people that normally wouldn't go there go there because they're open and they can do it from the car. And we do a lot of this car picking up drive through thing. If you are on the road or you're going somewhere, you're going out and you want something quick. So they're a good grab. They, they, they are better than that PG, the other company I had on there. Uh, I know it's a super long video, but I'm having fun. Um, Abbott Labs. Okay, so this week I expect to see Abbott down this week. Abbott has some complaints about their quick test not being accurate enough. The complaints on that are semi-justified. It's not enough to throw the test out. You still want to take the test because it does work fast and you're going to get 80 to 90 percent accuracy rate pretty much. And, and the other way around is like 10 percent wrong where it'll say you have it and you don't. We're going to understand that testing for, for the virus is probably going to be a rather common thing. And there are going to be so many of them that we're not going to be concerned about one positive or negative. I think we're going to be on a tracking of our health in a manner where we check ourselves more frequently. And so the result of one test is not as damning one way or the other. So I'm not bearish on Abbott. However, there's a lot of comp. I'm a little bearish on Abbott, actually. Look, they're down at 89. See, because their test isn't perfect, but it is quick. And they're the, still the go-to one right now that's quick. So. And they might adjust tests to do more work on their test also. Um, it's a tough call. They're getting more complicated. But before, a few weeks ago, I would have said Abbott's going to be on the rise up to 100. I think I said that. Now I'm not sure of that at all. Um, I, I think that they will trade sideways, actually, while this uncertainty about everyone else getting into the testing market, too, kind of happens. They're getting a lot of competition. So th there is that. I like them. They're in Temecula. I, I like them. I like what they're doing. I don't want to bash them or think that they're going to go down, but but we you have to be realistic that we're. I mean, we, I, I actually what I had said previously was everyone's going to be testing. Everyone's going to be testing. That's why Abbott's going to go up. That's still true. However, because everyone's going to be testing, everyone's going to be testing. Everyone's going to be working on testing and providing more supply. It's the reason why you don't have trouble getting a paper mask right now or the little mesh masks, everybody has them because all of a sudden we realized everyone's going to need them all the time, so we started making them finally. We responded. So the industry was, res was responding, coming up with tests. And, and that's, that's kind of going to take away the market share that's available for Abbott, actually, believe it or not, even though the market is growing as we are all going to need more tests. Is there anything else I want to talk about? Um, hit on a lot of topics. Beyond me, where did they end? 134, wow. Good for them. Amazon's too expensive for me, and they're still going up though. Look at them. Um, how did Target do? Target got up to 120. Really? Wow. Let's grab Target. Let's grab. I'll grab Amazon just for the heck of it. 
let's see if this works. Yeah, okay, so um, I like to compare Target to Walmart just to see because they're kind of similar share prices. Even though the market caps are different, I was, I was talking to somebody about this. The market cap for Walmart is $356 billion, and the market cap for Target is $60 billion. So that means that Walmart is essentially six times as valuable in market cap some than Walmart. I was like, well, does that mean there are six Walmarts to every Target store? That's probably kind of close to true, actually. I don't think it's globally, maybe. I, I don't know. I feel like it's more like three or four to one. But the thing is, is how many, how much sales are the Walmart doing more than the Target? And I think that is greater than the ratio of the two stores together. So that's what's interesting about that. So when you see them at the same price, sort of close to it, you got to realize that a move in Walmart is it, it really requires six times as much money or value to move around as does in Target. So. Is it really is is Walmart really getting six times as much business as Target? Tough question. Or are they both just continuing to get more and more business because other retailers like I, I, I shorted Bed Bath and Beyond because I think nobody's gonna go there anymore. They're just gonna order online. I'm just waiting for them to go bankrupt. Like boom, like JCPenney bankrupt. I think Macy's is going going like stuff starting to pop all over the place because nobody's going to malls anymore. I don't think anybody's gonna go to malls. Malls are gonna be just as dead as they were before, but they're going to be even more dead. So these these two are the winners here. And you see the stock. I mean, Walmart didn't go up the last, how many days is that? 30 days. Walmart's down a little bit. Um, but I mean, over the last year, where, are they, where were they? Yeah, I mean, they're, hit, they're hitting that arc. They're just going to keep going like that. Um, so, and Target... Is, is tar Target is reaching this here, right here. So Target, I guess, took a steeper hip and also a uh, steeper dip and also didn't have as much market cap to deal with. So it's easier for them to, to spike up. Um, Amazon, well, Amazon, Jesus Christ. Yeah, they're not, I mean, they, yeah, they are Walmart. Although Walmart has an online presence that's strong, um, but Amazon is still God to go to. Oh my God. I mean, yeah, right. Beyond Meats, the other one I want to talk about at the end here. Um, I'm conflicted on them. I'm I'm conflicted on them because the Impossible Burger is so good, and the Impossible Burger is made by Impossible Foods and not Beyond Meat. So I'm in love with a competitor's burger. I mean it. Like that, I, I never used to go to Burger King. I had I've had three Impossible Burgers in the last week because they're not meat. So I'm like I don't have to worry about overdoing it. Like it's plant. I feel like I'm eating celery. But it tastes like a burger. So <laughs> I, it's not made by Beyond Meat. Now, Beyond Meat, however, is in the perfect space to explode. And they're getting into McDonald's and they're jumping. Everyone's starting to jump on the ship because McDonald's, for example, the fact that McDonald's doesn't have a, a Beyond Burger or whatever the, uh, what were they going to call it? It's interesting. What are they going to call the Beyond? Is it Beyond Mac? I mean, I guess Beyond is kind of coining their stuff because they had the, the Beyond Sausage. Burger, uh, burger at Dunkin' Donuts, the impossible, it's like Beyond versus Impossible. So I guess it's going to be the Beyond Mac, um, the the Whoppers Burger King, so it's Impossible Whopper, uh, Beyond Sausage Dunkin'. They, they, I think they're going to call it like the Beyond Burger or the Beyond Mac at McDonald's. I will definitely try that when that comes out, and then maybe I'll migrate away from Burger King. So you can kind of, although the Impossible Burger is awesome, I don't know. Um, the point is, is they're in such a great spot right now. The only way they lose out is if their product sucks and meat becomes less expensive again and isn't infected with coronavirus and is all of a sudden easier to make and doesn't create uh, greenhouse gas emissions with cows farting and whatever else is going on. Like the, the only way that Beyond Meat doesn't have more market share is if the meat situation is great. And what kind of stories have we been hearing about meat? Plants closing because everyone's getting sick because it's a gross job and they have to work close with flying blood everywhere. And the, the places that 
own them, which are usually you would think of as money grubbing companies, are insisting on shutting their, their plants down. And the president is being like, no, open. No, I want Big Macs. Like, no, 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 no. You got to open. And they're like, dude, we're going to get sued. Like, there's freaking dying people all over the place. And, and Trump's like, I'll cover your insurance. Don't worry about it. Which don't believe him. He's not going to cover your insurance. He just wants his burgers. And, and so that's a problem. It's a problem. Um, not to mention like the, the crazy change in distribution chain of the food, not like too much of it needing to go to the slaughterhouse and not the slaughterhouse being closed or not being able to take it. And so then I don't know why they're slaughtering pigs or whatever the hell's going on. Point is, it sounds like literally a biological mess. And then you've got this plant matter that tastes like meat. And everyone's just kind of like, hey, like if it's cheaper than meat, which is what's going to happen because all this problem with meat, like raised insurance rates and, and dead employees and people getting sick is going to cause the cost of meat to gonna go up. It's going to become more dangerous to work with. And so Beyond Meat wins in two ways. They win because it's arguably healthier. Arguably. There's a really difficult debate. It's not it is not arguable, or meaning I'm, I don't have to argue with you. This is totally right. It is definitely safer than meat. I will bet my life on it because just the nature of how it's made and the number of physical, biological organisms, viruses, things that live inside animals and people touching the animals as we're get, breaking them apart, I guarantee you it is safer to have a plant-based grown protein meat the food instead of meat it is definitely safer you will take in fewer inborn viruses absolutely apps that is not even a contest so beyond meat wins on multiple levels and i've almost talked myself into buying it because you can see that this 365 day high was here back when there was a craze now the craze is actually justified i mean look at what this company did in the last two weeks I called this. I did the video when it was at 100 two weeks ago, right? I think it was about two weeks ago. I called it at, at, at sort of like its, 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 its second bottom here. And I bought it at 100. I mean, it went, no, it went down to 90. Uh, I called it at 100. It went down to 90. And then it blew up and went to 130. And I want to show you what that chart looks like. But it has had resiliency and there hasn't been this sell off of it and it's because people are like wait a minute like I bought this because I thought that things are going to transfer to this type of meat because of the meat problem the meat problem has not been solved yet things are we're opening up and things are getting worse it didn't go down you know like look at that that's like 90 right there let's go back 21 days um it it went yeah see I got it there it went down to 90 went from 190 and then it blew up and then it stayed there because you're going to hear about it beyond Mac. I, I think it's still a buy. I've talked myself into it after really going through it. It's a, it's a buy. It's really a buy at 130. Like hopefully it'll, it'll have some oscillation and go down and somebody will take profits because of other problems in the market and it'll drop below 130. But it's really, it's actually going to probably go to 150 when all said and done as we deal with the meat problem. There will eventually be a snapback a few months from now when everyone tries it. And as we, you know, we, we like food for a little while and then we get sick of it. As that works its way out and it becomes a more sporadic thing because we want a burger again or something, you know, it's going to weave its way in as an option for us. And some people are going to eat it religiously. Like, like I will definitely get a, a, a Beyond Meat something instead of going to Taco Bell. I've had bad experiences digestively with Taco Bell sometimes. I mean, I'd like to say no that that I haven't had that, but I, I know I know I've heard great D meat before. I've, I've heard horse meat. I know that's a joke. I know there's no horse meat in Taco Bell, but I, I've I just I've not always had success with Taco Bell, and I haven't had a single problem with the Beyond Meat stuff. So I don't know. I'll, I'll stop preaching about it, but it's kind of interesting because what's going on? Thirty minutes, God, forty minutes into this video, um, it's really a, a discussion of how as, as much as we don't really think that things are permanently going to change, maybe when there's a vaccine a year down the road and we're not scared about talking close to other people for long periods of time because there's a true 
non-transmission of that virus much going on anymore. Like we've eradicated viruses before or, or closely eradicated viruses to the point where not very many people are not a significant enough to scare us number of people. Like you never knew anybody with measles. I knew it, I had a teacher growing up who had polio when she was younger and she walked with the, the, the two uh, like cane, little hand cane type things. Uh, I remember her and I remember the whole story about the polio. I never really understood polio the virus and how it worked and how it really scared families and people would come down with it. This is a very, very similar thing to polio in that sense. The only good thing so far is that it's not affecting children nearly as much as it's affecting the elderly who have other comorbidities. So it's not so uh, it's not so devastatingly shocking because we don't generally see people of active normal age just dropping dead on the streets. However, that is going to probably happen more and more and more as we spread it more. Um, you, you can't put that genie back in the bottle. Um, so we're fundamentally changing in a lot of ways. And some companies are really ripe to totally explode out of nowhere like the Beyond Meat. Walmart is set to just become a staple of humanity in the world as like a base supplier. Um, your tech companies that are juggernauts are going to be because we're doing everything virtually all the time. They're going to have, they're going to be the conduit through that and make money off of it in a million different ways. Your Amazon, because stuff that you order, you don't go out, like you're not going to go out shopping. I, I got into an argument. I really got into an argument about TJ Maxx. That's how I'm going to end this video 41 minutes in. Um, to see if the person watches this. So I, I argue about TJ Maxx with somebody almost every day. And they're like, I bought TJ Maxx. I see everybody going to TJ Maxx. TJ Maxx is going to get all these secondhand clothes and they're going to sell to everybody and people are going to go shopping. And I keep telling them like, listen, there's essential stuff and there's non-essential stuff right now. And yes, I'm sure ladies, you'd love to go to TJ Maxx and get a blouse. And I'm sure you will sneak out and do that. However, grandma ain't going to TJ Maxx. People that are concerned about their health, people that have other stuff to do, people that don't want to take a trip out, people do not want to go try stuff on in its shared dressing room, people are going to be worried and concerned about when they're out and sharing air and spaces and closed spaces. So if it's the grocery store, if it's Walmart or TJ Maxx, and you only have so many hours in the day and you need... Unfortunately, unfortunately, if you either you're going to buy your clothes at Walmart because that's where you are, or you're going to buy them online from Amazon. And if they don't fit, the blouse doesn't fit. You're just going to put it in the box and send it back because Jeff Bezos is like, I'll take everything back. I don't want to ever, I don't want to ever have anybody angry with me and buying something and not being able to return it. He takes everything back. I'm sure Jeff Bezos' house is just filled with everybody's returns. He just buys them. That's why he needs all those billions because he doesn't want anybody to be unhappy. So. You're not going to go to TJ Maxx. If you do go to TJ Maxx, one out of every five people that used to go to TJ Maxx is going to be going to TJ Maxx. They're going to be outliers. So I see all companies like TJ Maxx, sort of special, specialty retail, where normally you think people would shop there. They're not essential. They're going to be overtaken by the web or you browsing online to make the purchase instead of going there. So if you're not going to TJMaxx.com, I say TJ Maxx, which I believe is TJX. I think it's. I think that's it. Um, I think they're. I think they're going to lose. I think that they're going to sort of. They're right on the cusp. I'll give you that. They're right on the borderline between being essential because they have. Look at this. Look at this. See them trading sideways or down. No, they're losing business. This is. I'm right. They're losing business. Because, because not as many people are going out. Yeah. See, they haven't recovered. They haven't recovered like the other ones. Like, look at what Target did, right? Look at Target recovering like this and TJ Maxx flatlining for the last 45 days or whatever that is right there. See this? It's not sustainable because they don't have the the reason to go there essentially. They need to start selling toilet paper. That's my advice for you TJ Maxx, is learn how to get toilet paper and tissues and paper towels and have that lining the side of your store. Because you need some essentials, you need your hand sanitizer or rubbing alcohol or something that you can't find anywhere. 
you got to do something. You because if you want people to come look at your clothes, they're going to need a reason. They're going to be able to. They're going to want to wipe their butt, not just buy pants. <laughs> okay. Um, so anyway, that's a ridiculously long video, but um, I'm just excited because it's just cool to see the world change so fast. I won't even tell you about what's going on with oil and coal and stuff. That will be for another video. But um, that that'll be from a video about stocks to short. Not the best ten, but the worst ten. So we're out for now. May all our trades be winning.